What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Last week, I made a video which was a deep dive into the analytics behind my top tournament finishes over the last 15 years. And in that video, I talked about all of the great positive things I did in tournament fishing. Today, we're gonna to talk about the things I didn't do so well on and things that I definitely need to look out for as I fish tournaments in 2020. And so in this video, we're gonna go into my top five mistakes I've made so many times in bass fishing tournaments that I need to make sure I avoid and that you guys should also avoid when you're fishing tournaments. So let's get into it. Number one. No, sorry, I wasn't supposed to do the funny voice anymore. Number one. So the first mistake I used to make all the time when tournament bass fishing was to focus more on my results for my practice day than the conditions I was faced on my tournament day. And I believe this is the number one mistake that the majority of tournament bass fishermen make. And it's an easy trap to fall into. And so let me explain kind of what I'm talking about and give you a situation that you may have faced in the past. So let me set the stage. You're about to blast off for your tournament and you're able to practice for this event, let's say the weekend before or the day before the tournament, and you crushed them. You called them on every spot you went to, you had 15 to 20 pounds of bass, and you feel like you're dialed in on the lure, the area, everything. And then you get to your first spot, you don't catch any. Second spot, don't catch any. Thir third spot, and you still don't have a fish. But you're like, I'm throwing the same bait, water temperature is the same, everything seems to be going the exact same as my practice day, why am I not getting bit? And this is something that happens to almost every single tournament bass fisherman at least a couple times. And what's happening is that you are not adapting to the conditions of the tournament day and you're trying to force a pattern or a bait or a technique that's working in practice day on the current conditions. And this is something that you absolutely cannot do in tournament bass fishing if you're going to be consistent and be successful every time you go out or at least most of the time. And probably what's happening is that when you're trying to fish your tournament day, the conditions have changed slightly. The wind changed to a different direction. The sun came out. Maybe the temperature's a little bit colder, a little bit warmer. Maybe you had some rain which raised up the water level. There's so many factors that can change how these fish position and cause these fish to move and shift what they're doing. And so one thing that I always focus on my practice day is finding an area that has a lot of fish in it, a productive area with lots of fish. I don't focus so much though on a technique, a bait, or a specific spot because a lot of times when you practice the week before or even the day before, the fish are going to be moving and shifting around and so they're not going to be exactly where you found them in practice. And so again, what I try to do is focus to try to find like a one mile stretch of the lake I feel confident in and I figure out the pattern and the bait for that day. You know, if I was fishing in 10 foot of water on my practice day, I might need to fish in 15 or 20 feet of water during the tournament because that's where the fish have moved to. And so making these adjustments is one of the hardest things to do when you're tournament bass fishing and it's the thing that really sets the good consistent tournament anglers apart from the mediocre or bad tournament anglers. And so that is something I'm gonna go into a lot more as I am doing a lot more of my tournament videos and you should be able to see me make these adjustments all the time from my practice day to my tournament day and hopefully this will be helpful for you guys. Number two. So the second big mistake I used to make all the time when tournament bass fishing was to let the boat traffic from other tournament anglers affect me. And this is something that takes a lot of experience and time on the water and time fishing tournaments to get over because in a lot of situations you might be practicing on a Friday or even like on a Sunday or something like that and there's less fishermen out on the lake. And so you have kind of the run of the lake, you don't have to worry about other anglers getting in your way. But then on tournament day, you have 150 boats out there and at least three or four guys usually will find the same fish. And so maybe you'll start in your first spot and there'll be three or four guys in the area. And this is super common. This is not something that you should be bothered by, but it's definitely something that can mess with your head, especially if someone across the pocket from you or hundred yards down the bank catches two or three fish. And so the couple things that I always keep in mind when I'm trying to tournament fish is one, there are a lot of fish in all of these areas you're gonna be fishing and no one is going to make 
the presentation to every single target or every single place a fish is going to be. Another thing is that other guys are going to be fishing differently from you. So one guy might be going down with a crankbait, one guy with a jig, one guy with a wacky worm. And finally, fish are gonna be moving in and out of these areas all day long. They're not just going to be sitting there all day waiting for you to cast your bait up and catch them. A lot of times bass will pull up on a bank for 20, 30 minutes, then pull back out and then pull back up for 20, 30 minutes. And so, it's not that bad to actually fish behind anglers or around other anglers, but it still can have a little bit of a psychological impact, especially if there's a lot of guys around your area. And so one way that I've combated that in the past is set a goal for myself before I go fishing to try to catch three fish off of community holes or areas where there's a lot of other anglers around and two fish off of areas that no one else is fishing. This really helps me out because it allows me to have the pressure of trying to outfish all of the other anglers in the area and try to get a five bass limit while fishing around a bunch of people. And it also a lot of times will help me catch bigger fish because the subtle areas that I will find are gonna be less pressured, those bigger fish are gonna be easier to catch and usually I can catch my bigger fish in those areas. And really the way I go about this is I'll split my practice up into two different sections. I'll spend half my practice looking for really obvious areas that show up on Navionics that are really easy to spot from the bank, whether that's a stretch of laydowns, riprap banks, something like that. And I'll try to figure out which one of those are good. Then I like to spend the other half of my practice looking at really ugly looking banks with basically no visible cover or maybe it looks terrible on an avionics map or whatever it is. And you know, it might take me four or five hours to find one or two spots, but in that four or five hours, if I can find one area where I can get two fish, then fill in my limit with the community holes usually I'm doing pretty well in my tournaments. And so that's the approach I take at least and it helps me deal with fishing around other people. But this might be something that you're just gonna have to learn to deal with over time and just get used to and feel confident that you can actually fish behind people to catch fish. Number three. The third mistake I used to make all the time when fishing tournaments was sticking with one technique for too long. And this kind of relates back to the first big mistake that guys make, which is focusing too much on their practice day. And a lot of times I feel like when you go out on your practice day, or let's say that you're reading up on the tournament online, you might hear that a jig is a great way to catch fish, or maybe you caught them on the jig in practice. So you go out in the tournament and you fish a jig for four hours and don't get any fish. And you're like, what's going on? I can't figure this out. Well, usually what's happening is that maybe the fish just aren't eating the jig that day. The conditions aren't right, or maybe everyone's fishing a jig and they're getting conditioned to it. And so I don't like to stick with one technique or even like one water depth or approach for more than like an hour a day. And if I fish a technique for an hour straight and don't get any bites, I'm changing up. I'm doing something completely different. So for example, if I was catching them in practice cranking riprap with a square bill crankbait, there's two things I might do. Well, if I don't get bit for an hour on the square bill, I might switch up to a deeper diving crankbait or throw a jig or a Texas rig or a shaky head. Or I might just abandon the riprap altogether and go start fishing docks or fishing shallow laydowns. And I'm usually gonna stay in the general area where I found fish and where I was catching them, but I'm just gonna try different approaches. Again, fishing the conditions, fishing the moment, and not fishing my preconceived notions or my practice period and what was successful then. Number four. The fourth mistake I used to make all the time was to listen too much to doc talk. What is doc talk? Well, doc talk is basically when you hear from a friend, a local tackle shop, maybe from a tour professional or whatever about how the fish are biting on your lake or how they've bit in the past. And you focus so much on how people have caught them in the past or what they're telling you is working that you let it completely cloud your vision on what the lake is doing on that given day. For example, there was a few tournaments in the past where I got told on Lake DeGray that you could catch a lot of fish on a Carolina rig offshore. And so I was throwing a Carolina rig all day for this junior tournament. I didn't have a day to practice and I was just chunking the Carolina rig. I never threw a Carolina rig before. I had no idea where the fish were positioned, what was going on, what area of the lake was good. And I just stuck to that Carolina rig all day. Come to find out, the fish were all over the banks. You could just go down the bank, throw a fluke, a wacky reworm, 
just whatever and crush them. But because I was listening to the doc talk, I just assumed that what I heard from a trusted source was what the fish were doing. Well, that's what they were doing a week and a half ago, but in the week and a half between when I heard the news and the tournament day, the fish had completely shifted. They've moved from deep water up to shallow water and I didn't catch anything. And so a lot of times it is okay to at least hear what other people have to say about the lake and how people are catching them. But one thing I've learned over the years is that it's really hard to catch other people's fish. You may have heard that before, but catching other people's fish is hard. Catching them the way that someone told you they caught them or even if you've been out in the boat with someone, how to replicate their success is so difficult. And so what I really like to focus on more than anything is what I feel confident in, the baits I like to fish, and what the conditions are giving me. Focusing on the wind, focusing on the number of bites I'm getting. I mean, if I'm not getting bit on a Carolina rig offshore for an hour, I'm not gonna keep throwing the Carolina rig. I'm gonna slide up to the bank and check the bank. And if I had done that in that tournament, I would have caught a bunch of fish. And so something that you really need to focus on in your preparation is to make Make sure you keep an open mind. Don't have preconceived notions going in because if you do have those preconceived notions, you're going to get your butt kicked in tournaments. So really quick, I want to let you guys know about something awesome I just added to my website. If you go to fishthemoment.com and then go to my fishing playbooks tab, you'll notice that there is something new that's on here, which is the ultimate guide to fishing rods. And this is something I've been working on for the past six months. And it's basically a guide to which fishing rods you should use with every single type of bait you might encounter when you go fishing. And so what I did is made charts where I broke down each fishing lure by the weight of the fishing lure and then matched that up to the action and length of rod I use with each of those type of baits. And here's just one example here, but I list out about 15 to 20 different baits and applications and then all their different weights and then I summarize all these results into these nice graphics that show you the number of applications per different type of fishing rod and I also give you recommendations on the type of fishing rods I would purchase in terms of brand and price point and so something that took me a lot of time to put together and I spent quite a bit of money to actually get all the fishing rods and test them out and so I have this on my website for sale for $20 and I do believe it's a really valuable resource that will help you guys when you're making your decisions on which fishing rods to buy and so definitely check it out if you are in the market for new fishing rods and want to make sure that you're making the right decision when you purchase them. Number five. The fifth and final mistake I used to make all the time when tournament bass fishing was not having a game plan going into my tournament day. And what I mean by game plan isn't knowing exactly which bait or which area I'm going to fish in the tournament. It's having contingency plans when things start to go wrong. And this is something that's really important to do when you're tournament bass fishing because 98% of the time, the tournament's not going to go the way you thought it was going to go. And a lot of times I found when I was fishing in junior tournaments and in high school tournaments is that I would fish for the first four hours of the day. I would fish all the areas I had planned on before the tournament with the baits I planned on using. And around noon, I had no fish in the boat and I had no plan of what to do going forward. And I basically had three more hours of the tournament where I was like, well, what am I gonna do? What's the plan? I had no plan. And so usually what I like to do going into tournament is to have two or three backup strategies. For example, if I find some fishing practice offshore and I feel like I'm catching them really well and then they don't show up, well, I like to have at least two backup plans or three backup plans of patterns I'm gonna try if the offshore bite isn't successful. One of those might be running down main lake points and just throwing a crankbait or a jig. One of them might be going way up the river and flipping laydowns on dirty water. Or another might be skipping a shaky head or a wacky worm under boat docks. And usually these backup plans are things that I'm not gonna practice for in my, in my practice days. They're just things that I have some confidence in and I feel like I can get a few bites on. And usually I do this more to save face in tournaments when I have nothing in the boat by noon. But a lot of times these contingency plans actually result in some really good tournament finishes. And this actually happened in one of my college fishing tournaments, actually the first one I ever fished. And I was fishing this tournament, had this game plan of how I wanted to fish, 
and it just did not work out. There were some offshore areas I wanted to fish and I just couldn't get any bites. And so my one contingency plan was to run laydowns on the main river with a crankbait. And I was just gonna fish as many laydowns with a crankbait as possible. I knew that maybe I could catch fish doing that. I didn't really know, never practiced on it. And I went on in the last three hours of the tournament from having nothing to catching 15 pounds and winning the tournament. And so having that contingency plan laid out ahead of time, planning on where those different laydowns were around the lake and having the confidence to go fish those areas because it's something I actually like to do all helped me be successful in that tournament. And so always have a contingency plan, always have a backup strategy in case worst case scenario happens and your fish are completely gone when you get their tournament day and you're going to be a lot more consistent and successful in tournaments. So guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully this information was helpful and it will help you avoid some of the mistakes I used to make in tournament fishing in your upcoming tournaments in 2020. And I'm hoping that I can also remember all of these things that I did wrong so I don't make these mistakes as well. And so if I do, I'm gonna call myself out in my videos. Again, I'm gonna be making tournament videos of my practice days, my pre-practice periods, and my tournament days for every single tournament I fish this year. And I'm also gonna be doing a lot of like, quote unquote, like fake tournaments or just tournaments that I'm gonna make up for myself as practice for these upcoming tournaments so that I can improve my game and reach my goal of winning one tournament this year. And so hopefully you guys are gonna enjoy this content. Let me know in the comments if you like this focus on tournaments. I know some of you guys aren't tournament bass fishermen, but I know that even if you're not fishing tournaments, this information can be helpful if you are just a fun fisherman and wanna try to put more fish in the boat. So thanks again for checking out the video, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.